Uh, Ukrainian mothers are volunteering. I know the truth. CNN asked Russians what they think about Tonight, a senior U.S. defense Putin's war. That Russian forces have shown a willingness to hit civilian targets on purpose. The mayor of Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, telling me that Putin is intentionally killing civilians. On Russian state media, though, wow, it's a totally different picture. It's like a humanitarian effort down there. Nick Robertson is out front with this report from Moscow. On Russia's state TV. That's crazy. As opposed to when we invade and CNN is like, oh my God, look at how horrible the American invasion of insert country here is. Like, you know, yeah, of course the Russian State Department is doing propaganda, jackass. That's their job. Just like it's your job to do the exact same propaganda when we do it. Like, I don't know why. Like, this doesn't mean that it's okay, by the way. It's not appropriate when CNN does it, and it's not appropriate when the Russian, the Russian state, the broadcaster does it. But it's so strange when they literally, not the same, but okay, exactly. It's okay when we do it, brother. It's literally, it, it feels like it's parody. Whenever they constantly cry about this, what about ism? Shut the f up! It's not what about ism! What about my dick and your mom? The hypocrisy is so thick, dude. You have to address it. God damn it. And I even qualify it for you thick-brained, absolute baby-brained, smooth as a smooth as a grape and the size of a grape-brained lobotomy recipients. I qualify everything I say specifically so even your idiotic moronic brain can understand it like I'm feeding you baby food. You know what I mean? I'm I'm basically qualifying every statement so you understand what my position is. It's like I'm literally doing the ooh choo-choo train. Open up your mouth. Choo-choo train is coming every time I have to tell you something and you still boof it. You still go no. Hey. Audiences are only being told what the Kremlin wants them to know about the war in Ukraine. This new Russian army video shows troops handing out humanitarian aid. They claim Russian forces are giving civilians safe passage from the fighting. A message reinforced in President Putin's latest state TV speech. Our military have provided corridors in all areas of combat action. The terrible reality the rest of the world sees. Shelling of civilians, suffering, death and destruction never gets aired on Russian state TV. And many Russians believe their government that the war was forced on them by Ukraine, backed by NATO. I know the truth. This was a forced measure on our side. After what Russia went through in World War II, it's madness to believe we want war. I see what's on TV when I'm getting ready for work. We try not to get too involved in it because we've got enough of our own problems. Some do care enough to reach beyond state TV, but even then, they're not convinced by what they see. Yes, I have heard that some civilians, even children, have died, but I'm not sure I can believe it because there is fake news. They are making money. Obedient anchors on state TV never question the Kremlin's version of facts and reinforce its tropes about denazification. No mention that President Zelensky is Jewish or Russian missiles killed civilians near a Holocaust memorial in Kyiv. Even so, some mostly younger Russians see through their government's lies, get their news from friends, independent and social media. Almost all of us are understanding this thing, that there is a lot of lie around. So we do not know what's happening. I think this is a crime, an aggression against a neighboring country. Our government invaded. Tonight, the world's attention is absolutely fixed on Iraq. We only see a slice of the whole battlefield on television, where there are cameras specifically Baghdad today. But this was a violent representation of what is happening in many places. The U.S. fired 600 cruise missiles at Iraq today, $600 million worth of technology. The British fired some, too. The United States flew 1,500 missions today, 700 of which were bombing raids. On the ground, U.S. and British forces pushed into Iraq from the south. There was some resistance. U.S. forces were held up at times. But based on official U.S. sources and reporters in the field, they are moving steadily toward Baghdad.
two Marines have died in combat today. One of them in the battle for Umm Qasr, the southern port. Another as Marines rush to take over an oil installation in the south. In the town of Safwan today, once the U.S. had arrived, the locals tore down a poster of Saddam Hussein. Hundreds of thousands of posters to go. Had arrived, the locals tore down a poster of in the south. In the town of Safwan today, once the U.S. had arrived, the locals tore down a poster of Saddam Hussein. Hundreds of thousands of posters to go. The baby is Austin. aid. I'm so sorry. On Russia's state TV, audiences are only being told what the Kremlin wants them to know about the war in Ukraine. This new Russian army video shows troops handing out humanitarian aid. We're told in the town of Safwan today, once the U.S. had arrived, the locals tore down a poster of Saddam Hussein. Hundreds of thousands of posters to go. We're told that Iraqi troops are surrendering in considerable number, and today the first commander of an Iraqi division surrendered. Saddam Hussein, seen on television today with his younger son and two officers, a smaller gathering than usual whenever that videotape was made. The CIA now believes that Saddam Hussein survived the attack on Wednesday night. The Defense Secretary, Donald Rumsfeld, said he didn't know much more than that, but he said so that the Iraqis could clearly hear that he thinks the regime is losing control of the country. We're going to begin, of course, at the Pentagon with our Pentagon correspondent who works 24 hours a day, ABC's John McCrethy. John? Peter, as you say, this was a day of dramatic changes in the air war and on the ground. And for a few hours tonight in the Iraqi capital, the U.S. gave the regime its first taste of a strategy called shock and awe. Downtown Baghdad lit up in explosions and balls of fire. Hundreds of bombs and cruise missiles ripping into Saddam Hussein's palaces, into the headquarters of his secret police and his security structure. On this one day, sources say the U.S. used more than 1,500 bombs and cruise missiles throughout the country. The goal, cut off the regime's ability to communicate with its military and cripple the military's ability to... Would you say, like, a, a special operation, you know, to tactically decapitate the, the uh, government? Bro, this is why I say, like, Russia could have literally just plagiarized. If Russia basically put their invasion plans and their propaganda surrounding it into a Turnitin uh, uh, system, it would come out 100% plagiarized from the actions that Israel has taken time and time again in, in Palestine in Gaza specifically, and in the West Bank as well, and the United States uh, actions uh, everywhere, basically. Like, the, the, the human shield uh, arguments, the, the, even, they even fucking brought up WMDs, bro. They even brought up WMDs, like, the Russia was like, uh, you, Ukraine might actually try to get uh, a, a WMD uh, going. Like, come on, dude. Fight. It was intended to be another body blow, one of many now being delivered by the U.S.-led coalition to a regime that Defense Secretary Rumsfeld claimed was starting to crumble. The regime is starting to lose control of their country. Their ability to see what is happening on the battlefield, to communicate with their forces, and to control their country is slipping away. In a bizarre effort to prove just the opposite, the Iraqi Minister of Defense held a press briefing this evening during the worst of the bombing, bravely pretending to ignore the explosions outside that shook his maps. As the bombs fell on Baghdad, the coalition ground defensive made sweeping changes in the map of who controls the country. We have had an incredible 24 hours of success unlike anything I've ever experienced in my career. First, the South. More than 60,000 troops moved across the border with Kuwait, the force so massive it took 25 hours just to roll its 20,000 tanks, trucks, and armored personnel carriers into Iraqi territory. By day's end, lead elements of the Army's 3rd Infantry Division and the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force were more than 100 miles up the road toward Baghdad. Meanwhile, U.S. and British forces went after the key Iraqi...
Why aren't they talk? Did did not a single civilian die in this? Just like it keeps talking about how strategic and how targeted it is. The the strikes, the precision. <clears throat> it's just real strange to see that. So the reason why I'm fucking yeah, they showed they said two Marines died. So the reason why I'm showing you this is not to like run defense for Russia. Only a dumbass who is uh, completely oblivious to how horrifying uh, America is would, would think that I'm defending Russia. No, I'm saying it's the worst. It is actually the absolute worst thing I can say about another country is that they are similar to the United States of America. Okay? With respect to their imperial bloodthirst. I just need you to understand that. So when, when they run, when these very same journalists who are still working... When these very same journalists who are still working, when these f generals that they have on to analyze the situation on the ground that, freedom, that literally have blood on their hands, the blood of Iraqi children on their hands, talk about how horrifying this is. Remember that on the one hand, they're correct about Russia, but also on the other hand, they're propagandizing their own personal innocence. They're reinforcing America's superior military power because it's the same exact program that is criticizing both. But the actions, the actions are perfectly justifiable when we do it. Okay? You're killing people. That's awful. <laughs> what can we think about it? Normal people understand everything, but we can do anything. Because we're afraid, like everyone else. The balding, ugly bitch, Russia is is shill russia shilling ass he said government is so worried independent media could challenge their narrative in the past few days it shut down two outlets and is right now preparing a law that would criminalize what it calls fake media it could carry a maximum 15 year jail sentence despite the Kremlin's best efforts at controlling when you wonder why 70% of Americans don't know what the f no fly zone is remember that it's because of this okay it's because of this media that's why 70% of Americans don't understand what a no fly zone is they just hear it as like a suggestion or some shit 74% of Americans should Im should said said that the NATO the North Atlantic Treaty Organization should impose a no fly zone in Ukraine why why do you think 74% of Americans do not understand, like, a simple, incredibly basic fact here? They don't get it. They don't understand it because the media is not telling them what this is. Doesn't affect us directly? That's not true. It does. That's, look, Americans are selfish pigs. So, if they, if a no-fly zone somehow didn't impact America, then yeah, I would be like, yeah, of course they say this because they're selfish pigs. No. They're not only selfish pigs, but they're stupid selfish pigs that don't understand that a no-fly zone is the exact same as boots on the ground military warfare. It implies that it, in order to enforce that no-fly zone, you need to have American Who? fighter jets quite literally downing Russian jets, which is an act of war. It's state-on-state -state violence, which means two nuclear superpowers will go to war. It means World War III, but World War III will not be the same as World War II. It will just be nukes. We live in a post-nuclear uh, armament world, okay? We live in a nuclearized world where states have a load of nukes. Russia six has 6,000 of them. Anyway. In the narrative, many Russians have taken to the streets, angered by Putin's war. More than 7,500 people arrested so far. Bro, that's fucking crazy. I can't believe they would arrest- I can't believe they would arrest anti-war protesters, dude. That's so wild that Russia is arresting anti-war protesters. I mean, that- that's like... We want to- uh, that, That's- know, that's go. actually wild. That's like- that's- that would never happen. Oh wait, this Iraq war veteran was arrested out, uh, outside the White House along with 130 other veterans? Thanks everyone for being here! What? We're here to say to all those serving in the Army, in the Marines, in the Air Force, in the Navy, that you have the absolute right to refuse to take part in these criminal wars. And that's a right that all of you should exercise. You have no reason to go put your life on the line and kill and die for profit. We've been to Iraq. We've been to Afghanistan. And we know what these wars are really about. And we joined the military for many reasons. Because we need a college education. Because we need a job because we need health care. And then we join the military and they tell us that our enemies 
or poor people in caves in Afghanistan or poor people in the desert of Iraq. But we've been to those countries and we know that our enemies are not other poor people abroad. Our enemies are the people that laid us off from our jobs, that denied us health care, that make it impossible to get an education. Our enemies are not in the poorest countries on the planet, but right here in the richest one. The occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan alone are costing over $700 million every single day. This is a crime every single day while so many of us are hurting. Well, I think all of us here and the vast majority of people in this country would agree that we can spend $700 million a day better than bombing people that we have no reason to bomb. We can spend $700 million a day rebuilding those countries we've destroyed. We can spend $700 million a day caring for the veterans we get home when they get home, and then we can spend $700 million a day giving every single person health care, a college education, a job, and a livelihood, and a home. That's who we need to be spending our money on. But this government is not going to do that. They're not going to use the money in that way. They're not going to end the wars. And they're not going to do it because it's not our government. It's their government. It's the government of the rich. It's the government of Wall Street, of the oil giants, of the defense contractors. It's their government, and the only language that they understand is shutting down business as usual. And that's what we're doing here today, and we're going to continue to do until these wars are over. It's crystal clear now that these wars are going to continue. For the record, this is in 2010. At that point, it's like almost entirely recognizes the Iraq war is literally just unpopular and ongoing in perpetuity. 2010. And they're still arresting people. That's crazy. I wonder why. Because they do it all the time. We do this. We do this shit too. And only if you believe, only if you believe that it's acceptable when the American government does it, do you think I'm doing whataboutism when we're talking about Russia. It is completely and wholeheartedly unacceptable that America does this shit and it's disgusting that russia is doing it too okay that's my mother position on this matter not some like other bullshit like i'm not saying one side is appropriate for doing it and the only reason why people keep saying what about ism when we talk about this sort of stuff is because deep down inside they have that american brain rot where they literally think no it's okay it's somewhat okay when america is doing it so you think i must be saying it's somewhat okay when russia is doing it no it is absolutely disgusting to behave like gangsters in this capacity. These arrests are not remotely comparable. Pure whataboutism. Uh, that's what I got to say to you before I ban you. Sorry. You're a, you're a piece of shit. You are a goddamn idiot, dude. You, you are. You are a sucker. You ...and expand and go into other countries. That is the trend. That is what we know, that there is perpetual war. And it's only going to stop if the people... Stand up and stop it. It's not rare top tier brain. A lot of people, the reason why I'm showing this to you is because I need you to shake your uh, like pre-existing biases. I want to show you the one-to-one -one identical comparison of what you are watching unfold in front of your eyes. I want you to use the, the, the century of red scare sentiment and the feelings that you have, the anger that you have towards Russia culminating in this very moment where like Russia is doing an unjustifiable and just straight up as bright as day violent imperialist action in the way they're defending it I want you to understand that the similarity is a one-to-one -one comparison with what America has done time and time again I'm using your biases that you have towards Russia so you understand that America does this all the f time and has been doing it and will continue to do it They'll continue to do it if you do not push back, if you do not recognize that they're doing it. It's not uh, close to being one-to-one. -one. It's nowhere close to being one-to-one, -one. yes, because what America has done is far, far more brutal uh, thus far. That shock and awe campaign that you just watched, that's fucking day one, baby, okay? Russia's been invading Ukraine for eight days, and it's it hasn't even gotten to the shock and awe level yet. Partially because it'll never get there because they just don't have as much bombs as as uh as, as we do this is not acceptable this is not appropriate what russia is doing is unjustifiable america has never invaded a democracy the f do you mean america has ensured democracy doesn't happen in in pretty much every f in south america country shut the f up the only one-to-one -one, the only not one-to-one -one situation is that the entire world did not immediately f 
call the arms against the United States of America and f- sanction Americans out the ass. And God damn it, I wish they f- did at this point. Holy shit, you brain dead idiots. And that's what we're going to do, sisters and brothers. A lot of people ask me, what do we do? Because we all know things are bad. We all see the atrocities on TV. We read about it. We experience it. Steve always asks, what do I do? Because we always want to know what to do. Do we vote? Do we support a politician? Uh, what, you know, do we join an organization? What do we do? Well, I'll tell you what we do. It's simple. We fight. We fight and we fight and we fight and we shut down our workplaces. We shut down our schools. We shut down the streets. We shut down business as usual. And we fight until we force the people in there to do what the people out here want. Because that's how we're going to get around and we're going to fight until there's not one more bomb drop, not one more bull- Yes, both superpowers do it, but are they doing it for the same reason? Sometimes maybe, but Iraq and Ukraine seem very different to me. Very different goals. <laughs> yeah, when America wanted to take Iraq, it was because of WMDs. You're a disgrace. Leave America. Nope. I'm here to stay, baby. That's one of the beautiful parts about America. That's one of the good things about America is that I can say this shit and get away with it. Fired. Not one more co- a soldier coming home in a wheelchair. Not one more family slaughtered. Not one more day of U.S. imperialism. Let's fight to make that happen. We can do it today and then the days ahead. My favorite take from these uh, absolute baby-brained idiots, okay, is always whenever whenever they say, oh yeah, well I bet you couldn't criticize the country anywhere else, okay? And it's like, well, and get the out of America and go there then. It's like, well, no, dude. Like, you want... What's going on in other countries here to happen in America when you do that? I hope you understand. You're literally saying like, yeah, it's bad in in Russia. You can't even criticize the country, which is why I want America to turn into Russia for you, (laughs) motherfucker. I want you to not be able to criticize the country. We have to fight to end these wars and create a better world system, brothers. It's just awesome. The difference is... (laughs) Ukraine is Iraq is full of brown people and Ukraine is full of white Europeans. That's what chat really means. I mean, straight up, some people do really mean that. You don't study the white man's burden in schools because your chat is literally repeating that rhetoric verbatim going to civilize the uncivilized non democracies. Exactly, baby. That's it. And they think it's so new. They think that rhetoric is so unique and so new. It's like, dude, dude, like since the, the, the holy uh, conquests. It's always been the same exact thing. It's like the Orientalist barbarians need to be tamed by our civilizing imperialism, our civilizing colonialism. Like, you didn't come up with that, idiot. It's like everyone has been saying that. Every pedophile cousin f- aristocrat that, that didn't know how to f- wipe their asses has been saying that shit in perpetuity, in the beginning of f- time, okay? Four. <laughs> Including this elderly lady. At a protest in St. Peter's. That veteran that you guys saw, yes, some of you recognize him. That's Mike Preisner. He's a friend of the show. I've had him on in the past. He's also a PSL. He's with uh, the Empire Files. He's the man. I like him a lot. And no surprise, this video has yet to be shown on state media. Yeah, right now, the truth is perhaps the most dangerous thing for President Putin in Russia, which is why the White House is so concerned that the Kremlin is stifling the independent message, cracking down, shutting down independent media. In fact, CNN has learned that the Biden administration has held at least seven interview, uh, held interviews with at least seven Russian language outlets, Echo, Moscow Radio, and other- Isn't that funny that that woman was also a veteran? Isn't she like a Leningrad vet? Like even down to like arresting veterans, like down to arresting veterans, like just one-to-one perfectly plagiarized. Biden administration has held at least seven. Wait, also we, we, Leningrad survivor, not veteran, but technically you can, everyone's a veteran at that point. Um, Noam Chomsky, Russian invasion of Ukraine is a major war crime ranking alongside the US invasion of Iraq and Hitler's Stalin invasion of Poland in 1939. It always makes sense to seek explanations, but there is no justification, no extenuation. Chomsky, there is nothing to say about Putin's attempt to offer legal justification for this aggression. Its merit is zero. I agree. Of course, it's true that the US and its allies violate international law without a blink of an eye, but that provides no extenuation for Putin's crimes. Damn, dude. What a classic whataboutist, dude. 
The impression is uh, Mehdi Hassan. I'm not uh, saying Chomsky is British. I was reading it in Mehdi's voice. Wow, dude, typical, dude. Typical tanky, dude. What a fucking tanky bitch ass, dude. Classic. God, I hate, I hate this tanky. All those people calling Noam Chomsky a tanky were absolutely obliterating his penis by sucking it when he was like, you need to vote for Joe Biden, by the way. Like, they loved him. They love him when he's... They absolutely love him when he's talking about voting for Joe Biden. Lefties. Lefties, by the way. Love love having, like, a big online leftist communities that are, like, um, that, that only like Noam Chomsky when he's saying you should vote for... Uh, you should vote for Joe Biden and despise him for all of his foreign policy takes. That's all, oh, man. That's what aboutism. That's what aboutism. That's bullshit. NATO, Noam Chomsky, oh, NATO Chomsky. Noam Chomsky often gets smeared by the right and even misrepresented on the left, but on issues like the threat posed by Trump and the GOP and now Putin, he's been pretty damn clear. Mehdi, me, can I worship you? Senin için TRD'de mürit toplayabilir miyim? Topla abi. Um, guys, stop, stop uh, typing dumb Mark shit in the chat. The I'm gonna ban all of you, please. Okay, let's see what the people are saying in the People's Convoy. Doing the right thing. He's taken out uh, the Kassarian Mafia. The man's not an evil man. Here's the thing, the media is doing what they're doing and sharing the, sh excuse my French, the crap about him Nine months because he's over the target. Set in, I can feel Do you think there's even a war going on out there? No, not at all. They can easily fake a war if they wanted to. All they would do is just like film a, a few things. And Are you aware that the majority of the pictures that they've been showing regarding the alleged war in Ukraine are from prior conflicts and are unrelated to Ukraine? Yeah, that's what I was saying. We shouldn't have anything to do with it at all. <laughs> Let them figure out their own mess. The deep state has always made Putin to look like the bad guy, um, but he's a good guy. Freedom! <laughs> Freedom! I fucking love that, dude. God, Americans are so awesome. Yeah, Channel 5. That's awesome. Wait, is there more? Please tell me there's more. That's it? That's the only thing they have right now? I cannot wait for that video to drop. Holy shit. Holy f shit. I'm genuinely curious. Why would America cause disruption in other countries so democracies cannot thrive? What would be our motive or end goal to do so? Excuse my naivete. Disruption. If Ukraine is... Um, if Ukraine can, uh, can maintain... If Ukraine is a weak country... Then America can constantly dangle NATO membership, EU membership, things like that. And not even just America, but like European powers too, by the direction, in my opinion, of the United States of America. Do stuff like this. They can take the they can take their natural resources and at a, at a tidy profit. And also, it's a win-win because they can also then use Ukraine as a as a destabilizer against their foreign adversary in russia i love that they're like putin is good like where, how do you come up with that take bro like how there are certain things that you just simply cannot say in america okay yeah i did have mike on last mike summer for, during the u.s want, polling uh, the u.s pulling out of give Afghanistan. a little bit of a background on yourself i mean you're a filmmaker you are a producer and writer for the empire did, that's it why the u.s was in afghanistan in the first place with mike preisner Everybody hates you? Yeah, except for you guys. So, you know. Yeah, we definitely don't hate you. I mean, some of you do, but, you know, what are you going to do? It's just some of you come in here to be like, I fucking hate you. And I'll let you know. Interview, uh, held interviews with at least seven Russian language outlets, Echo, Moscow Radio, and other independent uh, stations among them. Echo Moscow Radio was one of those shut down in the past couple of days. TV Rain was another. I spoke just a few weeks ago with the anchor there. She said that I every day they you. knew they were living on borrowed time. Well, that borrowed time's up because the Kremlin's shutting them down because they cover, they cover the protests, they cover and try and cover the facts. And now we know and see what's happened to them. Aaron? Nick, thank you very much. And I want to go now to Mike Latovka, who fled his home in Kharkiv and traveled for more than 30 hours.
to a safer location for now in Western Ukraine with his family and his girlfriend. And Mike, I so much appreciate your time. I, I, I have to imagine it's hard for you to hear a piece like you just heard. Our Nick Robertson in Moscow speaking to Russians about the invasion. Um, many saying they're against the war. I mean, good thing America would never ban outlets like that. You know what I mean? So there is that. But uh, but but many also believing what they see on Russian TV, uh, asking a woman about Asshole. civilian casualties. And she says, I'm not sure I believe it because there is fake news. There were others who said the same. Mike, what do you want the Russian people to know? The main thing I want that I'd love the people to know is that their country is is obviously the aggressor. There is no the such thing as, as a, Thanks for the a military operation. Team that they're being told there is no such thing as uh, countries or nationalities here, Russian speaking people who need to be saved. Uh, this is absolutely clear even from my personal experience. My girlfriend's uh, father lives in, in, in Russia and in this situation, he wants literally nothing to do with supporting her or her mom and her sister who are right now under fire in Kharkov, in, 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 uh, which is being constantly bombarded. Kharkov right now is like the Stalingrad of, of that time. And the pressure of the media in Russia is so strong that, that people who are actually from here, they're from Ukraine, they go there. And after living uh, there for some time, they assimilate and they just take everything at face value. It's so strong that in fact, uh, my girlfriend reached out to him just for financial support in this in this case. She didn't reach out to him with some kind of proof that, okay, uh, this is what you're doing is wrong. She just said like, look, we have a military situation here. We have a war uh, and can you help us in some way, at least financially? He said, uh, to quote it directly, helping you financially will be considered treason here. And that was the end of the conversation. Oh. It's very sad that, that this is dividing people so much in this way. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry for your girlfriend and, and, and her family. I mean, just, just uh, it's, it's impossible to, to truly understand. I do. I can't believe this dude literally, one, started a war, two, escaped it specifically so he could, three, go on CNN and brag that he has a fucking girlfriend, dude. Wow. This guy. We get it, bro. You have a girlfriend, okay? Oh, sick. Some of us don't, okay? Afghanistan. Stop talking to me about Afghanistan. I've been maidenless for 22 years. Every time the door... Every time I hear that door unlocked, that's my Afghanistan. <laughs> I f***ed it up. <laughs> you know, Mike, that you documented your journey when you left Kharkiv, and, and I spoke to the mayor earlier this hour. You know, he's, he's there, obviously, those air raid sirens. He's hearing as he speaks and talks about them. E extraordinary. He uses the word enormous number now of civilian casualties. I know you were incredibly lucky to have left there, but it has been an arduous journey uh, to where you are now and, and obviously only a stop perhaps on where you may be going. You had to shelter in a metro station. You had to deal with, with airstrikes. Um, uh, how was your journey or, uh, thus far? And I want to emphasize thus far because obviously you're now far from home. Yes, it was, it was long and it was also a sort of a waiting game since the first day after uh, after the fact that we understood that okay this is the, we're in this for the long haul they're going to be i mean he's literally he's just flexing on cnn about having a girlfriend now i mean i'm sorry i'm sorry this is an international flex okay they're not going to stop we were waiting for a way to get out in my case i've got a big family i've got uh four sisters a single mom and my girlfriend who are who were living in kharkiv and kiev some in kharkiv some in kiev both of these places places are really melting pots right now and if kiev is kind of still holding its own it seems that russia is purposefully trying to make an example out of kharkiv by just bombing everything possible there they don't even care they're not even trying to show that they're bombing strategic uh, units so essentially when we on the second day we were just waiting for for a way to get out because we'd already been sitting in bomb shelters and the metro for some time and luckily for me uh and, and my family and some other people who were in kharkiv another thing that doesn't make sense is like why would you bomb the shit why would you shock and awe uh Kharkiv, russia, a, russia, a a russia. a city that is more favorable to russia than than others like another thing that just i am super super confused by <laughs> not anymore yeah no shit uh, a friend of mine gave me gave me a contact of an it company that was to 
that was to take that was to do do an evacuation effort from Harkin. They sent a few buses there, and uh, we were able to go down through a previously checked and more or less safe route. We went down south to Poltava, and then through a few other cities, which I would prefer not to give away right now, just because it could, could be sensitive information. But eventually, we made our way to because Western Ukraine to leave Oblast, at the top of the and hour, we I are currently here with, with, with my family, if I were to and contemplating, my uh, as, for, as for the girls, we're contemplating the, the ladies, if, if they will continue going on further. Uh, one of my sisters has already gone on further, and she's at this moment, as we speak, on the border uh, with Hungary, if I'm not mistaken, and my other two sisters could be close to follow them, mm -hmm. together with my mom and, and my youngest sister, who is only five years old. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, I would not be able to leave the country, even if I wanted to, the because the the was that the because cell. every day you make me go with the ads at the top of the hour, but I know I can avoid the top of the hour ads if I were to sub for five dollars, use my wife's boyfriend's Amazon Prime sub. <sighs> I'm just running the ad at this point, dude. I mean, you can't be hitting me with a dono uh, debate, dude. That's fucked, fucked up. Messed That's up, right. dude. One minute ad break is coming now, boys. That's a one out of ten transition. Not my fault. The fault of that person. There is a mandatory conscription, and, and men between the ages of 18 and 60 cannot leave. Plus, while I'm here, I do believe that there is use that I can bring here, mainly with information and logistics. Right. Well, gosh, you are in you are in my thoughts, uh, as is as is everyone in your family. There's a Ukrainian streamer from Kharkiv on Twitch that streams almost 12 hours per day and there are no explosions on a stream at all. Oh my god, a whole fucking year, WTF, Omega oh Galal. Are you telling me that there's no bombs blowing up in Kharkiv? Is that what you're saying? What's the TOS on this one, chat? This is the last video that we're going to watch on this, okay? And then, and then we're just going to move on to updates. Look at your boy, what the fuck's he doing now? Dude, what? Why is he wearing the helmet with the night vision goggles when it's light out? Wait, doesn't that literally destroy his eyes? What is happening? It's not on, right? Trying to find some bitches, I bet. <laughs> True! Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>